Hi, today I'll teach you how to create trading signals based on a simple moving average crossover strategy. In contrast to another previous video that I created, where I show you how to create a backtest for this strategy, today we'll only focus on how to create and calculate this indicator. Also, we won't be using trading specific libraries, but only common da data science libraries like NumPy and Pandas. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and import the required libraries, which today are NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib and Daytime. So let's go ahead and import NumPy as NP, import Pandas as PD, what else? Import Matplotlib, Matplotlib.pyplot as PLT and from date time import will use not only date time but also time delta. Okay, so I already imported everything. And if you get an error, it means that you don't have one of these libraries. So the only thing you have to do is open a terminal and install the required libraries. For example, if you don't have NumPy, go ahead and do and write pip install NumPy. The same applies to all the other libraries. Okay, so let's close the terminal and continue. We'll use Pandas Data Reader in order to load the financial prices of, say, today we'll trade Tesla. So let's go ahead and also import import pandas underscore data reader dot data as web. Okay, that worked. Web dot data reader. We'll get Tesla. T S L A. We'll get it from Yahoo and we'll need a start date and an end date. So let's get those. That's why we imported date time. The start is going to be, let's see, date time dot today minus time delta. Let's use one year. Days equals 365. And the end date is going to be just today, date time dot today start equals start and equals end and let's see what it returns and we'll just need a close price so let's filter it close that looks good let's store it as df underscore tsla and let's rename the column the f tsla dot columns equals it takes a list and let's call it close. Let's see how it looks. The F dot tail. That looks right. So let's go ahead and see how it looks on a chart. Let's just do plot. And if you want to see the chart bigger, you can set the parameter fig size equals to, for example, 15,9. And now you can see it better. Now let's go ahead and calculate the moving averages, which is actually why you came here to this video. So, okay, let's see. Let's add it as a new column in a data frame and let's see df underscore TSLA. Let's call it MA underscore 20 equals to df underscore TSLA close dot rolling. Let's use uh, I wrote here 20, so let's do a 20 day moving average, 20 and of those let's calculate the mean. And if you don't know why we did that, take a look at, at how the data frame looks now. As you can see, the first 20 rows display not a number. That's because we need 20 previous data points in order to calculate it. So for the first 20 rows, we won't have a number. TSLA had, I don't know, the first 30. And as you can see, the first 20, uh, I'm not going to count them, but it's 20, are going to be not a number. And after that, we'll have 20 previous prices in order to calculate the moving average. Let's also add another moving average and let's calculate, I don't know, the 50 day moving average. Let's just copy it and paste it. Moving average 50. 50 and 
in order to keep things clean, we should create a function in order to calculate it. So let's do that. Define moving average and we'll take the data and the period as parameters and return a pandas return pandas series consisting of the data dot rolling period dot mean let's see if i did that correctly okay let's take a look at how it would look like this ma underscore 100 let's see it's going to equal moving average data will send the close and 100 name data is not defined ah that's right because it's called df underscore tesla will send the closing price of the data frame there we go let's take a look at how it looks okay so in this case the first 100 rows are going to be not a number in this column after which it will start displaying the moving average of the 100 previous days today we just need two moving averages so let's go ahead and delete this row and uh, since we don't want to have the not a numbers let's delete them so let's do that data frame underscore tsla dot drop na and in place equals true let's take a look at how it let's see how it looks and I'll, I'll run everything again since we deleted the first 100 rows unnecessarily because of this column which we won't be using so let's go ahead and calculate everything again let's load it okay so now we only dropped the first 50 rows and we'll have more data to so what we will first do is to create a column that will indicate us if the moving average of the previous 20 days is greater than the moving average of the previous 50 days df underscore tsla let's call this column i don't know let's see short underscore greater than long that was not very creative but that's okay equals to numpy where open parenthesis df underscore tsla ma underscore 20 is greater than the 50 day moving average so df underscore tsla let's use the ma 50 column and if that is true we'll set it to one otherwise we'll set it to zero let's see if i didn't make a mistake dot tail let's Let's see the latest 100. Okay, so it changes values and let's see here where, it, where it's zero. This one is the 20 MA is lower than the 50 MA, so that's okay. And here where it's, where it's one, the 20 MA is greater than the 50 day moving average. So it works as expected, but we don't want to have a one every time the short moving average is greater than the longer one but only when it changes so so only if it changes from one period to another so if it was smaller than the other and it was on the next period greater than the other then we want to have the one otherwise we want to have i don't know minus one for example in which would tell us to sell it if we hold it let's create a column and call it signal signal equals two and it's a very simple function that's called diff which which just calculates the difference between one row and the previous one so let's go ahead and do that df underscore tsla will calculate it on the short greater than long short greater than long dot diff and if you don't know how that looks, let's go ahead and show the head, the first 50 
and as you can see we have here a signal let's see if that's correct here we have the short moving average lower than the long moving average and here it is bigger than the long moving average so it is actually a switch the way I looked at it was unnecessarily <laughs> difficult I could just I could just look at the difference between this short greater than long and and determine if it was working without having to do this comparison but okay let's continue and see how everything looks plotted so let's go ahead and create a plot figure which will be big like I don't know 20 and 10 and let's go ahead and we'll use the closing price the 20 day moving average and the 50 day moving average so let's do df underscore tsla dot plot uh, let's call it let's set the label equal to close and let's also use a color to equals black I don't know why k is black let's take a look at when matplotlib color black k k as black okay also let's add the moving averages label equals to moving average but we have two so let's call it 20 day moving average and the color is going to be blue let's set it to blue and let's do this again I'm sorry here I have to specify the column to close and to ma underscore 20 that's right did I call it like that yeah okay let's copy it and do the same for the 50-day moving average 50-day moving average and set the color to green okay let's run it and it looks fine so okay it would be nice to also have the, the legend showing so let's do that by adding the following i think it's plt dot legend that's right okay so as you can see we have the 20 day moving average in blue and the long one in green so we should have a trading signal indicating to sell here this is too small let's zoom in okay that's too small to determine we should look at the data frame but we should definitely buy here because it the the low, the short moving average is above the long one and sell here again and and buy here again it may be useful to add a visual indication of that so let's do that first i'll add the buy signal so let's do so it might be easier if i just uh, paste the code and explain it line by line instead of just uh, writing it here so let's do that we have in order to add the buy signal to the plot we have to filter the signal column for only those rows that equal to one and keep the index of it that's the x the x-axis of our plot so we'll have let's see how many we'll have one two three buy signals and we would want it to be placed at the place where it intersects so at the actually at the price it would be the ma20 or ma50 it's it's it does not matter which one because they are crossing so it's the same place and we would only want to have them plotted where the signal equals to one so here we get the date and here we get the height the or the price let's paste it here and as you can see we have the x-axis and the values for those uh, data points let's see how it looks okay so as you can see we have one triangle up here one here and another one here 
we just need to do the same for the cell signals. So we just copy and paste it again, add the cell signal to the plot. And it's the same as before, but instead of equals to 1, it's equal to minus 1. The color is going to be red and it's going to be a triangle down, which is a lowercase v. And the label is not going to be by, it's going to be cell. Let's see how that looks. And that looks very bad. That's because... <laughs> That's because we need to set it to minus one here also. And there we go. So as you can see, we created a fully working chart that shows us when we should have bought and sold the Tesla stock according to a 20 day and 50 day moving average crossover strategy. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. And if you like the video, please consider subscribing or just liking the video. I see you in the next one.